Practical Magic 9 here with six words that are describers of me. The first word would be obedient. My parents had a high value on obedience, not questioning their authority. And it wasn't until I was well into my 20s that they told me that uh, I only had to hear things once and I, I followed it. But uh, because of that, if they said to wait, I was waiting. I learned to be patient and loyal and steadfast. Number two was truthfulness. Truth was also highly valued. And they said that if you lie, we can't believe you. Uh, if you lie once, why wouldn't you lie again? And my parents also said that the worst lies somebody could tell were lies that they told themselves. So number three was I was very imaginative. I was an artist from the age of two. And I was quite a daydreamer. So... <clears throat> Imaginary worlds and reality sometimes, well, quite often crossed. Uh, number four, I was very shy, <coughs> very withdrawn. I was very awkward socially. And uh, I usually assumed that if something was, if people weren't my friends, it was something that I must have done. I blame myself a lot. Uh, number five, I was a bit of a positive thing, and Pollyanna. I was... I was a Pollyanna, I was kind of gullible. Um, blame my steady diet of Walt Disney movies and TV shows, but I was very much a <laughs> dogged optimist. Number six, I was very curious, which this was one thing that probably uh, naggled in the back of my head. Even though I was obedient, I was always asking questions, and I kind of kept them to myself. But about the age of 10, my father began to challenge why I accepted what I saw on commercials as being true, <clears throat> mainly with regards to like cereal and toys. But uh, one time, I remember watching a commercial for uh, dish, dish soap, and they claimed that their soap was better because the bubbles lasted longer. And I looked at my dad and I said, why do, what does bubbles lasting longer have to do with how well a soap cleans? And... The look on my father's face was so great, and he smiled, his eyes got really big, and of course, being a father pleaser, I started to realize that this was a way that I could get his approval and be a good girl. As long as I asked the right questions, I guess, I was fine. All of this reflection is merely to say that as I look at my life and I see that these were a lot of words, a lot of ways that... Um, I not only was raised in church, but I embraced uh, theism. And what many the many ways that I think that theism became entrenched in my life and it became very hard to let go. Uh, I see obedience, uh, patience, loyalty, uh, desire for the truth, and the fear of disapproval, and then the worship of my father being very intrinsic in why theism was so strong in me. But then again, I look and I see that uh, curiosity and questioning and the reasoning mind that my father was cultivating in me fought with me throughout my theism. And also one other thing, my desire for the truth. So that said, this is the end of chapter two. In chapter three, I'm going to explore life after about the age of 10 and the reasons that I converted. I went from just going to church on Sundays to having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Be excellent to each other. This is Practical Magic 9, out.